For this lesson, we are going to be finding the surface area of 3D objects and their word problems. So we're going to read the problem, we'll mark the text, and then we'll go ahead and use our formulas to find the surface area. And remember, surface area is found when you want to paint something, when you want to wrap something. Um, that's when we find surface area. So Vanessa is making a gift for her grandmother. She has a plastic cube, and the cube has dimensions of four inches le side lengths. She plans to cover each side of the cube with a photo. What is the total area that Vanessa will need to cover with photos if she doesn't want any gaps? So I see, and I had marked the text, that we have a cube. And so we need to remember, these are things we need to remember. A cube has six faces, and those faces are actually squares. Okay? And in the information, it said the dimensions were a four, so I'm going to put the four sides and a four here. So when I'm looking at this, which is a square front, I see that we have our dimensions marked. So I am going to go ahead now and pick my formula. So I could do area is equal to length times width, but that's for a rectangle. So I'm gonna do area is equal to side squared. So we have area is equal to four squared, and area is equal to four times four is 16. Well, that is only for one face. And we know that it has six faces. So we are going to do 16 times six. And when we do that, we get 96. And it will be 96. And I'm looking at the units. Again, they're inches. Inches squared is what the surface area of this cube. And there is our answer. Well, that one was not too bad. Let's look at the next problem. I think it's gonna be multi-steps because it's not a cube. Oh, what shape is that before we even read the problem? It's a triangular prism because I see it has a top and it has a bottom, those two uh, bases that are both triangles. So let's read the problem together and then we'll mark the text. Corbin has a paperweight on his desk that is painted gold on all sides except the bottom. The shape of the paperweight is shown below. What is the area of the paperweight that is covered in paint? So again, he has a paperweight and it's painted on all sides except, and this is really important, the bottom. Okay, so that means we are not going to count the triangle base on the bottom. When we use the formula for a triangle, we only need one of them. So let's start off with that, with the base. And you know what I like to do? I'm gonna separate my work, here's my brain waves. We're done with this first problem, we're headed and thinking about the second problem. Okay, so we have and um, as I'm looking at this problem, before we get started, you know, I see that we have rectangles. So this shape is made up of, and let's actually write that down. So we have a triangle um, basis, and there's two of them. But remember, we're only going to do one. And then it has, I'm seeing rectangle sides. And so it is three rectangles. So we're gonna need the triangle formula and we're gonna need the rectangle formula. And I wanna mark this picture because sometimes it's hard to see once we get started. So if this side is a six, we know that the opposite side would also be a six. If this side of this triangle is a five, we know this bottom part that actually starts from here to here, this is a five 
also. And if it's three tall, we do know that this would be three as far as the height of it. And even in the back here, because that represents the height right here, that would be three. All right, so now I think that's gonna help us whenever we need to do our formulas. Let's start off with our triangle. So for the triangle, I know the formula. And remember, even though there's two up there, we only need one base because the bottom will not be painted. So area is equal to one half base times height. So area is equal to one half for the triangle. See, we marked that six, so now it's easy. It's one half of six. And the height of the triangle is where it hits at 90 degrees is a four. So now one half of six is three and three times four we know is equal to 12. So, so far there's one of our surface areas that we need. So now we're gonna need to do three rectangles. And I believe that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write over here so that we're all able to see it very easily. So I'm gonna circle the dimensions that we're gonna work on. I see this rectangle in the front here, and I am going to be doing my work for that rectangle in purple. So again, area is equal to length times width. Area is equal to, we have a three times a six, well, let's do this, the length first, six times three, it would not matter. So area is equal to 18, and I'm not gonna put my units yet. We know that the units will be centimeters squared. So here is one of my numbers for my rectangle. Remember, we said that there were going to be three of them. So now I am going to do this skinny, it looks skinny, but it's just the angle that you're actually looking at. So I am going to go ahead and this is the one I'm talking about right here. This, it's kind of looking at it at, a, at an angle, but it is a rectangle. So here I have a five and I have a three. So that dimension, Area is going to be equal to length times width. Area is equal to, we have a five times a three. So area is equal to 15. Again, I'll put my units when I'm done. So there are my two. So which one am I missing? And the one I'm missing is the one here in the back. And it's right here. I'm outlining it right now. And so I see that this dimension is a five and I wanted to actually use a different color. So I'm going to cover this with brown. That is a five and it does stand three tall. And notice we used this dimension before. So I'm gonna put a box around it so you can see we're actually gonna use it again. So for my final one, Area is equal to length times width. Area is equal to the um, five times three. Area is equal to 15. So we actually had two rectangles that were the same. It was pretty hard to tell from the picture, but we just proved it. So to make sure that we have absolutely everything that we need to, except for the bottom, I see I have one base, that's what was needed, and I have one, two, and three rectangles. So that base was a 12. So what we're gonna have to do is we definitely will add all of these numbers together to find our surface area of the paperweight. So I am gonna start listing. Here's an 18, a 15, a 15, and a 12. And when we add those together, 
We have 13 and 7 is 20. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so the total surface area that's painted gold is 60, and that was centimeters squared. So this is our answer for the problem. If this video was helpful to you today, please add a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more Math with Marsha. See you again soon.